Thank you, Brent. Good morning, y'all. My name is Sarah. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm the pastor here at Old West. We're really glad you're here with us this morning, whether it's in person or online, however you're worshiping with us. We're fully uh, glad you're here, uh, however you're here. So uh, you're welcome to be here in this space, um, however you show up. Uh, whatever you believe, um, whatever you're struggling with, whomever you love, uh, whatever your doubts are or your beliefs are, you're fully welcome in this space, um, and there's a space for you here. Uh, just a few announcements that we've got this week. Uh, Monday night dinner is Monday night, so you're always welcome, whether you'd like to come and have a meal or if you'd like to come and serve or both. Uh, setup starts at 4.30. We finish around 7 o'clock. Uh, so you're welcome to engage at that at any point. Um, if you'd like more information, just let me know and I can connect you with Jen and she is the volunteer coordinator slash head boss of that. And she's wonderful. So I'm happy to connect you with Jen. And Saturday is food forest work day. So from 10 to noon, we're in the food forest, uh, watering, weeding, planting, harvesting, um, Holly always makes us a lovely arrangement on Saturday afternoon so that when we come in on Sundays, there are fresh blooms from the forest. So uh, if you'd like more information about that, Kate can always hook you up with more info. Uh, Karen is also um, one of our main coordinators. She's not here right now, but Kate and Karen can definitely hook you up with more information about that. We're in the food forest every uh, Saturday, except for holidays. And then um, the food forest is always open throughout the week. So if you'd like to come and harvest to come and sit, you're more than welcome to be there. I think that's it in terms of announcements, just general like church week stuff. Our practice at Old West Church is that um, as we go through our service together today, the leader will read uh, the italics and then you, the community are invited to respond with a bold. And so I invite you to join me in the call to worship. We arrive as wayfarers and wanderers. God tells us, don't be afraid. We are never alone. God is with us. Gather us in holy one, comfort us, mend us, teach us, prepare us, make us ready for the work. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our first hymn is Hymn of Promise. So you're invited to rise in spirit or in body for our first hymn, Hymn of Promise. In the pool there is a flower, in a seed an apple tree. In cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snowy winter, there's a spring that waits to be. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seek a word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery. Unrevealed until the season, something God alone can see. In our eyes are beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt and unbelieving, in our life eternity, in our death. And resurrection at the last of victory. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. I'm going to be doing the responsive reading. 
So I'm going to read the italics and feel free to respond in the bold. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praises to the glory of God's name. Make glorious their praise. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you, sings praises to you, sings praises to your name, Salah. Come and know God's deeds. Their works from human beings are awesome. They turn the sea into dry land so that they could cross the river on foot. Right there we rejoice in the divine. God rules with power forever, keeps a good eye on the nations. So don't let the rebellious exalt themselves, Salah. All you nations, bless our God. Let the sound of their praise be heard. God preserved us among the living. They didn't let our feet slip a bit. Our scripture today comes from Ecclesiastes 3. Uh, we're continuing our sermon series in July um, on... Uh, it's called, This Is My Story, This Is My Song. And we're going through kind of, uh, I wouldn't call it like greatest hits hymns, but definitely favorites. Um, and so throughout this summer series, um, myself and other people, including Olga, our wonderful uh, minister of worship and art and song is going to be preaching about these hymns and why they're important. And so uh, today we are going to be focusing on Hymn of Promise, which Olga will of course go into, but Ecclesiastes is a part of that. So we'll be reading uh, this scripture, Ecclesiastes 3. Um, and so I invite you, if you've got a Bible, uh, you know, most of us don't carry them around with us, no judgment, uh, but we have them on our phones. I'm reading from the Common English Bible. You're welcome to use whatever interpretation you want. There's a season for everything and a time for every matter under the heavens, a time for giving birth and a time for dying, a time for planting and a time for uprooting what is planted, a time for killing and a time for healing, a time for tearing down and a time for building up, a time for crying and a time for laughing, a time for mourning and a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones and gathering stones, a time for embracing and a time for avoiding embraces a time for searching and a time for losing, a time for keeping and a time for throwing away, a time for tearing and a time for repairing, a time for keeping silent and a time for speaking, a time for loving and a time for hating, a time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from all their hard work? I have observed that the, ta the task that God has given human beings, God has made everything fitting in its time but has also placed eternity in their hearts without enabling them to discover what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there's nothing better for them but to enjoy themselves and do what's good while they live. Moreover, this is the gift of God that all people should eat, drink, and enjoy the results of their hard work. I know that whatever God does will last forever. It's impossible to add to it or take from it. God has done this so that the people are reverent before them. Whatever happens has already happened, and whatever happens has already happened before, and God looks after what is driven away. I saw something else under the sun. In the place of justice, there was wickedness. In the place of what was right, there was wickedness again. I thought to myself, God will judge both righteous and wicked people because there's a time for every matter and every deed. I also thought where human beings are concerned, God tests them to show them that they are but animals because human beings and animals share the same fate. One dies just like the other, both have the same breath, life breath. Human beings are no better off than animals because everything is pointless. <laughs> all go to the same place, all are from dust, all return to the dust. Who knows if human beings' life breath rises upward while humans' life breath descends into the earth? So I perceived that there was nothing better for human beings but to enjoy what they do because that's what they are allotted in life. Who really is able to see what will happen in the future? Good morning, church, and um, good morning, um, our sisters and brothers who are present here and also good morning to uh, all our sisters and brothers who are connected to us 
uh, via uh, technology. We feel your presence here and we feel that you are with us and we are missing uh, you and hope that one day we will come together all in this century. Um, as Sarah just mentioned, we are um, in the middle of the series of sermons on hymns. Um, perhaps one day, wonderful idea came to our pastor Sarah, <laughs> maybe day, maybe night, maybe morning, but she decided we need to preach about hymns and we need to explore why do we love them so much? Why are we singing them? And uh, she selected the most um, loved hymns and here we are last sunday sarah was preaching i'm preaching this sunday and next sunday then we will have a visiting preacher and um sarah will conclude this series in august uh, so today i'd like to invite you to contemplate with me the mystery of life in the context of ecclesiastes and a hymn of promise written by Natalie Slees. Uh, but uh, let's begin with a prayer. Please pray with me. Most powerful and most merciful creator, help us come closer to understanding of your wisdom. Lead us in our search for truth and justice empower us by your Holy Spirit to endure and to grow in our faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So we just sang hymn of promise and heard Ecclesiastes. It is obvious that there is a symbolic connection between Ecclesiastes text and hymns lyrics. By both texts, we are invited to rise above the everyday business and to see our life in bigger picture. We invited to get away from each day routines and ponder our lives as God's mysterious gift in God's mysterious world. And when we rise about the vanity of vanities, we begin to see and understand deeper that as scripture says, there is a time for everything and the season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plan and a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build. And when we extend ourselves to God's spiritual realms, we'll be able to grasp that there is a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away. And when in solitude and silence, we listen to our hearts, we'll hear, what does it really mean? There is a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. In the hymn of promise lyrics, we may hear some symbolic echoing of Ecclesiastes. Natalie Slees, by presenting life and nature as a chain of events that develop according to God's plan, presents to us your vision of life so similar to what we see in Ecclesiastes. We just sang 
In the bulb, there is a flower. In the seed, an apple tree. In cocoons, a hidden promise. Butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there is spring that waits to be. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. Natalie Slees composed Hymn of Promise in 1985. She wrote that at that time of composing, she was pondering the death of her dear friend. Slees had a real talent to compose both texts and music. The Hymn of Promise has become a favorite hymn for funerals. It was written at the time when the author states that she was pondering the ideas of life, death, spring and winter, Good Friday and Easter, and the whole reawakening of the world that happens every spring. Inspired by the Thomas Stearns Eliot line of the core of the hymn come from the idea that in our end is our beginning. The phrase that so often sounds in the hymn. Natalie Slees dedicated hymn of promise to her husband, Dr. Slees. She simply wrote to Rome. Unfortunately, Natalie's husband, Ronald Slees, who was a United Methodist clergyman and professor of homiletics at Perkins School of Theology, Southern Methodist University, shortly after was diagnosed with cancer and died weeks after Kim's premiere. Ronald Sleet requested that hymn of promise be sung at his funeral service. A time to be born and a time to die. Though this text from Ecclesiastes is a profound truth of life, it sounds somehow sad, unless you remember the last verse of the hymn of promise. In our end is our beginning. In our time, infinity. In our doubt, there is believing. In our life, eternity. In our death, a resurrection. At the last, a victory. Unrevealed until its season. Something God alone can see. The title of the hymn of promise gives us theological orientation. God's promises are prominent part of the Bible. Some researchers confirm that the number of God's promises in the Bible came to 7,487. We are well aware that God promises to strengthen us. God promises to give us rest. God promises to take care of all our needs. God promises to answer our prayers. God promises to work everything out for our good. God promises to be with us. God promises to protect us. The theology of God's promises reveal that in times when we spiritually, physically, or socially feel defeated, God is still in control and promises us help. If we see that the door before us is closing, don't look too long at this closed door. Look for another one. Look for the door that is just opening for you in the moment when that one was closed. Though we may not be able to see it immediately, we should hope that God will give us new beginning, that God will show us 
the direction to go. It could be not the way we were expecting. It could be very different from how we wanted it to be, but we should trust and try. It could take time and it could demand from us more stamina and deeper faith, but God's promises will come true. Many of our hymns and anthems reflect biblical theme of God's promises. Hymns like standing on the promises of Christ my King, God never failed me yet, he is so sweet to trust in Jesus and many others. One of the best is him of promise. Perhaps simplicity and spirituality are main characteristics of the hymn of promise. The words of this hymn are so symbolic and they are able to reach our hearts and imagination. The melody is simple and beautiful. Each musical phrase begins with an ascending interval that gives this hymn a joyous character. It creates a magnificent picture of God's power and glory. While singing this hymn, we may see and feel endlessness of God's wisdom and love. In her life, Natalie Slees composed more than 200 choral works. Hymn of Promise became perhaps the most popular of them. This hymn became memorable among hymns written by an American United Methodist in the last part of the 20th century. And perhaps it will be sung by people for many, many years to come. Amen. It's our practice at Old West Church to not just have a scripture reading or not just have a sermon, no matter how fantastic. Um, it's a time to uh, recognize that we all learn and engage and grow spiritually in very different ways. Um, and uh, I've always been very open that music has been one of those things for me. And it's something that um, I think I, I tell Olga regularly is music is a very powerful part of my spiritual journey. Um, despite being a preacher, <laughs> I'm really bad at remembering sermons, uh, song hymns about, uh, sermons about hymns though. I can remember because again, there's this connection. And so we all know that we grow spiritually differently. And so we want to have time to do that, um, and engage in practices or try on new practices that help us expand our spirituality, um, that help us engage with um, the text we just read that with the sermon that Olga just preached. So we've got some time and space for that now. Uh, this is called open space and it's a free form time for you to, to get up, to move around and engage in practices that are uplifting for you. And so first uh, in this back corner, well, not corner, back wall, we've got a Stations of the Cross going around the entire sanctuary. This one focuses on mental illness. And if you'd like to engage and walk around the space with that, that's great. Underneath it, you'll find a communion setup. If you'd like to take communion later in the service, uh, we invite you to get up and to grab one of the plates and just tuck it under your seat for now. If you're at home, this is a good time for you to get up, uh, top up your coffee. Uh, and if you wanna use that for your communion juice, great, um, or find something else. Um, under next to the communion elements, uh, you'll see a QR code. Uh, this is a way that we do our um, online prayer request platform. So if we do pray out loud later in the service, and this is where if you would like a prayer read out loud, this is where you submit it. So grab your phone, scan it. There's two QR codes, they're teal. So uh, feel free to do that. If you're online, Kate's gonna drop the link into the chat. And this is a super easy platform to do that. It's also where you can give. And so we believe that giving is a spiritual practice. And so if it's part of your spiritual practice, giving online is a great way to do it. It's safe. All of it goes to Old West Church, super convenient. If you're like, I am old school, Sarah, 
Uh, I like to give, but I am, you know, someone else like that. We've also got an offering plate in the center. As you continue around the sanctuary, you'll find another Stations of the Cross. This one focuses on eco-justice, and it's like one that we're coloring in as a community. And so there's no pattern or dictation of how you have to engage with it. But if you'd like to color or engage with that Stations of the Cross, fantastic. Here at the front, you'll find arts, more art stations, as well as children's books. Uh, I find children's books to often be very encouraging and powerful. And so um, these have all been sourced by me uh, and by people who have find this part of our ministry of inclusive um, children's books to be really important. So uh, if you'd like to engage with children's books, those are great. Um, if you continue around, you'll find the Stations of the Cross with um, focusing on immigrants and refugees. Underneath it is art created by immigrants and refugees. You'll also find a votive and uh, tea lights that you're welcome to use a little kind of a little candle to light the tea lights if that's part of your practice. Following that around is another station with tea lights and a votive. This is with uh, art created by trans, non-binary and queer artists. Again, tea lights and candles you're like welcome to light. And then in the back, you'll find a altar with candles and icons. Again, if this is part of your practice, fantastic. Here in the center, you'll find our baptismal font. You're always welcome to dip in your hands and remember your baptism. These are all ways that you can engage spiritually uh, or just to see what is going on. And so uh, during this time, uh, John and Brent will be playing. So we invite you to, to move, to engage and to participate in a way that is spiritually uplifting or engaging or uh, you know, strengthening for you. Welcome to Open Space.
Let's stand and sing together, um, or help me sing this song, Nameless Alleluia. cries, see out and endless, hallelujah, from this moment on, joineth heaven's song, singing out and endless, hallelujah. miracles of life around us point like heroes to your name let our voices rise our creation cries singing out an endless hallelujah from this moment on joy of heaven's song singing out Hallelujah. Only a moment to live this life like shooting stars, but up the night till heaven's open. And we arrive in your presence, Lord, in your presence, let our voices rise, all creation cries, singing out in endless, hallelujah, from this moment on, join with heaven's song, singing out in endless, hallelujah. There's nothing better. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than this right now. Now. There's nothing better. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than this right now. Still the only one I want to cling to. You're the last thought on my mind. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, John. It's our practice at Old West to continue um, and shift from the time of word into this time of prayer and spiritual practices. And we believe that prayer is a spiritual practice. And so we shift from this word to this time of prayer and spiritual engagement. And we always begin our prayers with um, lifting up the, the mass shootings that have happened in just the last week in the United States. And of course, our prayers that this is, becomes an obsolete practice. It's no longer necessary one day. And, uh, but until that day, we will keep reading these names of these communities, recognizing that um, they are just uh, 
just a small bit of the gun violence that affects um, America, that affects our communities and families and individuals and our prayers that one day this is, is no longer uh, a practice and we will not practice war anymore. And so um, we invite you to hold these communities in prayer, assume a posture of prayer, um, and then we'll shift into the prayers that you have um, added. So we invite you to pray along. Tampa, Florida, four injured. Chicago, Illinois, four injured. Stanubaville, Ohio, four injured. Gary, Indiana, three killed, seven injured. Rochester, New York, one killed, three injured. Highland Park, Illinois, eight killed, 29 injured. Boston, Massachusetts, four injured. Minneapolis, Minnesota, seven injured. Kenosha, Wisconsin, one killed, four injured. Sacramento, California, one killed, four injured. Kansas City, Missouri, four injured. Denver, Colorado, one killed, three injured. Corona, New York, four injured. Chicago, Illinois, five injured. Richmond, Virginia, six injured. Manassas, Virginia, four injured. Mullins, South Carolina, four injured. Surprise, Arizona, three killed, four injured. Tacoma, Washington, four injured. God, hear our prayers. May continued steadfast cloak of gratitude and love envelop Pastor Sarah as she faithfully navigates and leads with tenacity, vision, fierce love and grace, binding us across generations throughout live experiences in the midst. God, God, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this brand new day. May this gift and its sunshine warm our hearts and brighten our paths throughout the coming week. God, God hear our prayer. prayer. Continue prayers for healing, strength, and guidance for my sister Donna and your host of humble servants. May they feel your unconditional love, presence, Lord. God, hear our prayer. May protection, love, and strength envelop the generous souls who pause in the busyness of their own day to share and care for others, means beyond words. God, hear our okay. prayer. Continue prayers to envelop those whose bodies are healing as both their bodies and spirits seek restoration and comfort. May they feel your loving presence, Lord. God, hear our prayer. Lord, please envelop with love and comfort, hope and healing those whose hearts ache with the loss of loved ones, especially Jane and Eli, Rochelle, Roz and Rhonda, Julius, Kariana, and others by name. God, God hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For Trace's birthday. God, God hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Thankful for Trace and Catherine's baby coming January, 2023. God, God, hear our prayer. Thankful for Larry's birthday today. God, God, hear our prayer. Bring an end to all systems of oppression and institutions of injustice. God, God hear, hear our prayer. Give us hope and dreams for a better future that we may make with you, Almighty One. God, God hear our prayer. Teach us your ways and guide us on the paths of peace. God, God hear, hear our prayer. Guide us. us throughout the seasons of our spirits. God, God hear, hear our prayer. Prayers for our president and his team as they meet endless challenges. Give them courage for justice, oh God. God, God hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We'll do it, yeah. We'll let Yvonne stay on vacation a little more. So let us come together in prayer. We give thanks, oh God, for this day and for each person who is gathered here and who is with us online. We give thanks for the gifts of life, for the air we breathe, the water we drink, for the soil that grows the garden so abundantly. And we pray that we find ourselves rooted in these basic gifts of life that come from you. We pray for grace among disappointment, outrage, pain, 
We pray for grace for ourselves, for others, as we walk our path, uh, which is not always easy. We pray especially today for the caregivers in our midst, for strength for them, for understanding, for peace, for acceptance of the limits of what they can do. We lift up our country, oh God. We, many of us enjoyed the 4th of July celebration on the Esplanade for the first time in three years. But the, the celebration has questions, has deep questions. And we're not sure how to answer them, how to direct them, but we do know that you will guide us if we ask and that you will provide wisdom. We're in a season of pain and turbulence, but we're also in a season of abundance and blessing. And living with both those realities is not always easy, but we pray for the ability to be rooted in your love every day. And for this, we pray in your son's name. Amen. You got it? Perfect. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you, Elsa. It's our practice to continue these prayers um, from prayers of the community to prayers around the communion table. So I invite you to join me in these prayers and uh, your part will be on the screen. So you're of course invited to read along uh, and participate however you wish. Uh, I invite you to join me. We cry out to you, our creator, come to us quickly. Listen to our voice when we cry out to you. Let our prayers come before you like incense. Let our uplifted hearts be like an offering. Our hopes are in you, our redeemer. We take refuge in you, our sustainer, creator of wanderers and searchers, redeemer of the dreamers and the skeptics, sustainer of doubters and seekers. Just as your presence surrounds and sustains us, ever constant, never failing, so your praises, they never cease. All of creation celebrates your steadfast goodness. And so we too bless your holy name, your mighty works, and your promised redemption, adding our voices to the hosts of heaven's ceaseless praise, joining their unending song, saying, Santo, 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 mi corazón te adora, mi corazón te sabe decir, Santo eres Dios. Just as the songs of the faithful they never cease, neither does your love for us, holy God, holy one, holy three. Out of the fullness of your love, you sent your child to dwell with us, to teach us how to love in return, how to become the beloved community, and how to co-create your kingdom here on earth. The night your child was falsely arrested, accused, and executed by a militarized empire state, Jesus took time. Jesus took time knowing what was to come. Jesus took time to create community. He took time to show the path of peace as possible, even in the face of empire. Gathering some friends around a simple table for a simple meal, he took time. He took some bread and he blessed it. He broke it and he gave it to those gathered saying, take, eat, and remember me. When the meal was over, Jesus took a cup. And doing the same said, as often as you drink of this, remember me. And we find ourselves in need of God's kingdom, Christ's community, and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So we remind ourselves of God's constant presence by proclaiming the mystery of our faith. Christ, you died, are risen, and will come again. We await your kingdom come on earth when your peace and justice will reign. Now is the point of the service, and it's called the epiclesis. And this is a fancy church word for the part of the communion service that means the blessing of the elements, the blessing of the rice cake, the blessing of the grape juice, or the coffee and tea and muffins, or whatever we're using, the blessing of these things. And in the blessing, the 
the theology behind it is this is when we, the priest, uh, invites the Holy Spirit to be in these elements, to be in these, this food and this cup, um, and to remind us, to remind us of who we are, children of God, and whose we are sent into the world to be the hands and feet and body of Christ. But because we have a very firm understanding of the body of Christ, that each of us are given different gifts and graces to go out into the world and serve as this body, serve by blessing the community, community with our gifts and graces, we know that in that serving, we are ministering to the world. We are in that way priests, each person, not just the minister, not just the priest at the church, but each of us serves um, and makes up the priesthood of all believers for all are going out with their unique gifts and graces to bless the world and serve it as God's hands and feet. So we invite all people to raise their hearts, raise their hands, um, and bless the communion elements together during the epiclesis. Creator, redeemer, sustainer of all, you are here. You are always with us, always loving us, surrounding us with your promise and inviting us into communion with you, to deep knowing with you and your creation and to form the beloved community with all. You challenge us to leave behind the systems of oppression. You empower us to be your body and co-create your kingdom with you. And you inspire us with your spirit to dream new dreams for all. So we ask in the boldness that your child taught us to send your spirit once again on us and on these gifts, that this bread might be like your heart broken for the world and this cup like your love poured out for the healing of the nations. May all of these gifts nourish us with your grace and your hope. Yet, God, we pray, keep us hungry. Keep us hungry for the work until your kingdom come, your will be done for all of your people. We pray this as your children, your beloved ones, and we ask that you continue to teach us, feed us, inspire, and guide us, and bring us into glory. Amen. And... We are bold to pray these words in the spirit of our sibling Christ saying, eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, divine parent of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Uh, if you are at home or in person, I invite you to take your, whatever you're using for bread, if it's this rice cracker here, it's gluten-free, I invite you to break a piece off. And this is known as a fraction. So just like in math, a fraction is the part of a larger whole. So you are holding a smaller bit of what was once a larger piece. And this is to remind you that you are a piece, a part of the body of Christ. You are integral to making it up. But just like the little piece that you're holding is also to remind you that you do not do this alone. Despite how small it is, you are not in isolation. You do not go at the work of justice and mercy alone. So do not be discouraged. So I invite you now to partake. If you're in person, you're invited to remove your mask and then of course uh, serve yourself. If you're at home, you're invited to serve yourself. And if there are others with you, you may invite, you are invited to serve them as well. Our final hymn is Draw the Circle Wide. So I invite you to rise in spirit or in body for our final hymn. After that, we'll receive our benediction, and that is the sending forth. Uh, so I invite you to sing, and we will then be sent forth into the world. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. No one stands alone, we stand side by side. 
Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Come on. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. No one stands alone, we'll stand side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. This will be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Sing it out. Draw the circle, come on. Draw the circle wide. Draw the circle, draw the circle wide. Um, please join me for the benediction. So as we've done um, earlier on in the service, I'll be reading the italics and you can join me in the bold. Um, and you'll see at the end, we have a series of three alleluias. And the first of those alleluias, we start off kind of quietly in a normal speaking voice. That's um, an alleluia for ourselves, recognizing that, that self-care is important and that we need to take care of ourselves in order to serve our community. The second alleluia gets a little bit louder and that will, um, that's an alleluia for our community, whether that's your family, your neighborhood, your coworkers, um, whoever you think of when you think of community. And then the last alleluia is very loud, um, as loud as can be for the whole entire world, recognizing that God draws the circle wide and embraces all of us. So please join me. We are being sent forth into the world, singing a new song. Give us songs of joy, sharing the good news and God's grace to all. We go forth in hope. We go forth in justice. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.